Hello and welcome to On The Sofa, the best place to be for the latest in the world of film. I'm Matt. And I'm Joe. We've got, the great, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We're going to be discussing Marvel and DC's upcoming movies, Star Wars Rogue One, and we're going to have some live guests and performances on the show. Including one from our very own Joe Haycroft. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, Matt. First we have the brilliantly talented Lewis Ross Nickel with a piece that he says is very close to his heart. Take it away, Lewis. is gonna roll me I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed she was looking kind of dumb with her finger and her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead well the years start coming and they don't stop coming best of the rules and I hit the ground running didn't make sense not to live for fun your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb so much to do so much to see so what's wrong with taking the back streets you never know if you don't go you never shine if you don't glow hey now you're an all-star get your game on go play hey now you're a rock star get the show on get paid and all that glitters is gold only shooting stars break the mold it's a cool place and they say it gets colder You bundled up now, wait till you get older Media men beg to differ Judging by the hole in the satellite picture The ice we skate is getting pretty thin The water's warm water, you might as well swim My world's on fire, how about yours? That's the way I like it, never get bored Somebody once asked could I spare some change for gas I need to get myself away from this place I said yep what a concept, I could use a little fuel myself and we could all use a little change. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming, best of the rules and I hit the ground running. Didn't make sense not to live for fun, your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see, so what's wrong with taking the back streets? You never know if you don't go, you never shine if you don't glow. Hey now, you're an all-star, get your game on, go play. Hey now, you're a rock star, get the show on, get paid. And all that glitters is gold, only shooting stars break the mold. Thanks Lewis, that was awesome. And Lewis will be joining us on the sofa in just a little while to talk about our first topic, Marvel and DC. It's a rivalry that spans decades through recent history. The comic book giants of Marvel and DC have gone head to head to tell the best stories of larger than life superheroes and terrifying villains. Recently, both companies have started new ventures in the world of film, creating whole franchises and shared universes to their re respective movies to varying degrees of success. Both franchises have ex excessive numbers of film planned right up until 2020. So today we'll look into the future of comic book movies and we'll speak to Lewis Ross Nickel about his thoughts on this. To cook us off, we've got a video prepared for you to fill in what's coming your way in the future of Marvel and DC. Roll VT. Spoken out of a staggering off. amount of films for the foreseeable future. And though across some are far more anticipated than others, it's safe to say we're going to be seeing them for a while, despite one side failing to make a film that gets anywhere near the enormous expectations audiences have. <coughs> that being said, here are a few of the upcoming superhero films you definitely won't want to miss. Number one, Spider-Man Homecoming. On the road! Hey, everyone. Has this been fitted to suit? Of course. It doesn't fit me. Just don't do anything I would do. And definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do. There's a little gray area in there, and that's where you operate. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You want the real Avengers? But this does not mean you're an Avenger, in case you were wondering. Oh. If it's not a hug, I'm just grabbing this one for you. Oh, all right, kid. Good luck out there. The world's changing, boys. And we change, too.
Mission Theater. Forget the flying monster guy. There are people who can handle this sort of thing. Oh, look at me treating like a kid. Because you are a kid. This is my chance to prove myself. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. The fate of the universe lies in your shoulders. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately, and we'll all be dead. Now, repeat back what I just said. Andrew. No! That's the button that will kill everyone. Try again. Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew. Uh-huh. Andrew. No! Showtime, a-holes. That's a really bad sign. Number three, Wonder Woman. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was back to Justice League. I believe that an enemy is coming from far away. I'm looking for warriors. This stranger. Others like him. I'm building an alliance to defend us. It's very important that I see this man. that like it explains why there's a total stranger sitting in the dark in my second favorite chair. He said he'll fight with us? More or less. More, more, or more or less. Probably more or less. He said no. He said no. joined by the band you saw perform earlier, avid film fan Lewis Schwarzenegger is here to talk about views on Marvel and DC. Lewis, thank you for joining us. Now, do you prefer DC or Marvel and why? I prefer Marvel as in like the whole universe. I just think the characters um, are a lot better. 
you know, they have a, there's definitely some stronger plots in there, I feel. And because uh, they're both, like, um, the plots can be quite uh, child-friendly, but also have some darker themes in there. Um, which franchise do you think has the better films? I would say definitely Marvel. They appeal to a much wider audience. So what is your favourite Marvel film and why? Uh, I would say um, Iron Man 1, the first one. I thought that was uh, very good because Iron Man was... Um, we'd had other Marvel films in the past, but Iron Man was one... All he really had was the cartoon before then. Um, so we, uh, it was good to see a film come out and it was done very well, I feel. It told the story quite yeah. well. Um, what's your favourite DC film and why? Um, I would have to say The Dark Knight Rises. I just think it's a, it's, it's a solid film. You know, it's, mm. a, it's got good characters, good plot. Good villains. Good villains. Yeah. It's a, quite a solid piece. So uh, people say DC have better films than Marvel. Mm. Um, do you agree? Uh, no, I think the Marvel films are still better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, DC films are sort of very oriented towards the DC fans who've read all the comics and know all the stories, whereas a Marvel film, anyone can walk in and just watch it and um, know what's going on, because uh, you don't have to have read all the backstory to get it. Do any villains like spring to mind when you think of good, solid characters in a film? Uh, villains in a film, I would have to say um, Bane is a very strong... In The Dark Knight Rises, Bane is a very good villain. He plays quite a big role. He plays quite a big role. He is <laughs> quite a big guy in the film. And um, it's, his, uh, it's the way it sort of it tells his backstory as you see him doing these things. And so it's sort of like it has that build up while everything is happening. And so it's sort of like slips back and forth. So what, what do you think the worst Marvel movie is? The worst Marvel movie? Um, I remember the... Uh, the Daredevil movie was pretty bad. Oh, yeah, I did very bad yeah. on that. <laughs> Smack down his face. So what do you think of the TV show compared to the film of Daredevil? Uh, I haven't seen the TV show of Daredevil. So well, um, the TV show is very, like, quite dark. Uh, I remember I watched the first, like, couple episodes and I turned off because it was just, it was very slow. There was no there was no action in, like, the first three so episodes. You, so it was extremely boring for you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was extremely boring just for me. Um... What's your? What do you think is the worst DC film? Uh, see, I haven't even seen that many DC <laughs> films. I've mainly just stuck to the Batman ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you were to ask me that question, I'd probably say uh, Batman vs Superman or Suicide Squad. Mm, those were definitely two weak two films. Two recent films. It was just they were, they were quite they were quite weak in there. Well, unfortunately, Lewis, that's all we've got time with you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll be have to go to an ad break now, but don't go anywhere because right afterwards we'll be joined by musician and film fan Claudia Kirkpatrick to talk about Star Wars Rogue One and to do a performance of our very own Joe Haycroft. See you in a bit. Valerie's Bakery, unexpectedly good.
chat about Marvel and DC, with the former being one of the largest film franchises ever created. But now, we're going to look at what may, what may be the largest. Star Wars has been around for nearly 40 years, entertaining generations of sci-fi fans with its ongoing and oddly structured saga. But now, Star Wars is looking to expand its universe even further, with the release of the first of its three planned spin-off movies, Rogue One. The film takes place before Episode 4 and will tell the story of the Rebel Alliance stealing the Death Star plans from the Empire and returning them to Darth Vader. The film will feature a cast of new characters and more of the stunning locations we've come to expect from Star Wars. Rogue One's release is just around the corner, so we'd like to show you a VT to give you all the information you need about Star Wars Rogue One. Hit it! about the humanity of it which just makes the whole thing so real ready uh, action where your heart's beating and you're actually in this situation you get something very genuine that you couldn't have planned you'll actually compose shots that if we were on a green screen set you just wouldn't have known were available. The pressure's so high. Like, we're making a film that's right touching my favourite movie of all time. But then if you're too respectful of it, that you dare not do anything new or different, take a risk, then what are you bringing to the table? This really comes into their own. That kid, when you were four years old, grew up with Star Wars figures. It's a bit like just being that kid again. You're sort of going like, ah, ah, ah. be with us. State your name for the record. Jim Asbury. Forgery of imperial documents. Possession of stolen property, aggravated assault, resisting arrest. On your own from the age of 15, reckless, aggressive, and undisciplined. This is a rebellion, isn't it? I rebel. We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. You need to know what it is and how to destroy it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. What will you do when they catch you? What will you do if they break you? Continue to fight. What will you become? Well, we know what 
tremendous. We're joined on the sofa now by a musician and self-confessed Star Wars fanatic, Claudia Kirkpatrick. Welcome to the show. So, for you, how excited are you with Rogue One? I'm extremely excited for Rogue One. I've been excited for Rogue One ever since it was first announced, ever since all the series came out and there was that story about what happened between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope and I've just always wanted to find out what happened there. I know that a big returning uh, character we didn't particularly see in Force Awakens is Darth Vader. And I mean, no one really cared who he was before he put on the mask, but in this film, you're going to see quite a more in-depth look on him. I don't know, what's your opinion? Yeah, that? I think that's probably what um, the more hardcore Star Wars um, fans in the in the audience are, are, are looking forward to most of all. It's been quite a while since we've seen anything from from Darth Vader. You know. Um, great number of years and I think everybody's just really looking forward to seeing what he brings back to the table. So do you think this movie will live up to its expectations? I think, you know, th this movie, it, something that I'll say about it is either way it's going to be spectacular. It'll be either spectacularly amazing and everybody will love it or it'll be a spectacular letdown. And, you know, when you watch the trailer, there's one in particular where the, you know, the screen opens, there's a big battle, the fire rises, and you just know that either way it's just going to be spectacular. Um, I know with the, the second, like, bulk of films that came out that were obviously panned by critics being awful, I mean, I was searching that wreckage figure. And is there anything that you can draw out of those films that was any good? Um, I suppose... Um, the um you, the 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 prequel trilogy yeah, the one. Yeah. i suppose what's good about them is yeah the the big moan is oh they're more political they don't really have the fights that we're looking for they don't have the the relationships between the characters that the original trilogy had but i suppose what they do provide is the ultimate ground like the the roots to the entire story and if those three films you know as terrible as some say they may were if they weren't made without them, we wouldn't have the entire foundation of Star Wars today and, and the I suppose the general story that makes everybody so interested in, in what happens in this universe. So what, what do you think of the cast for this film? The cast, I, I'm not really too clued up on the cast at the moment. I know that um, obviously Felicity Jones plays a very major role and I know that um, a lot of people are looking forward to seeing what she can do. Um, but in terms of the cast, I've not really um, had a very proper look in, into that um, as yet. To what extent do you think that this film is going to affect the rest of the Star Wars universe? Well, obviously the, the makers um, are trying to branch away from the already existing series. You know, for starters, they're calling it a Star Wars story. They're not having the traditional open and crawl. Um, so I think... As much as it does provide a lot of subtext for the Star Wars universe, I think as a film and as part of the franchise, it's going to try and move away and perhaps maybe even create a whole new fan Star Wars fan base for you know a different well a different breed of Star Wars fan. So, are you excited for Darth Vader's return? I am very excited for Darth Vader's uh, return. He's probably my my favourite bad guy in the whole franchise after General Grievous. So. I know they've got obviously Rogue One and things, mm -hmm. but there are more s films coming alongside the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. are you, have you heard of them? Are you excited for any of them? I'm really excited for them. Um, like from the second Force Awakens, like the credits rolled, I, I was just uh, completely buzzing about the new films that come along. I've not really um, thought into what might be in them. I've not really had a look into any plots. I'm trying to keep away from it as much as possible to be to have more element of surprise when um, I do go and see them. But um, there's a lot of uh, guesses I'm trying to make, and I don't really want to spoil it for anything. So, what is your favourite Star Wars film? My favourite Star Wars film, um, I think Empire Strikes Back, is probably um, m my favourite. I think because A New Hope is is very new and all the characters are still trying to get used to each other and you know just trying to mix and find that story and then Return of the Jedi obviously I feel like that's a bit it, it's, it's too later on to be this exciting new thing and I think Empire Strikes Back is a nice balance between the two. So you mentioned General Grievous as being one of your favourite characters and Darth Vader as well. Mm -hmm. uh, are they your, just your favourite villains, or have you got any other outstanding like favourite characters? Uh, they're my favourite villains, I'd have to say, even though Darth Vader is probably a pretty cool character. My favourite character overall is um, probably Luke Skywalker. I know it's pretty boring, but 
I, there's just something about that character that I like. And then obviously there's Han Solo and everybody loves Han Solo. So do you think Rogue One's going to be as good as Empire Strikes Back? Um, for me personally, I doubt it's going to be as good, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, Joe, as much as I hate to say it, I'm afraid it's time to end the show. And it's time for you to make your way over to the performance area with Claudia to play us out. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us on the sofa. We hope to see you again next week when we'll be discussing the upcoming Assassin's Creed movie and we'll be joined by Michael Fassbender. Now, to play us out, please enjoy the musical stylings of Joe Haycroft and Claudia Kirkpatrick. See you next week. Skin, oh yeah, your skin and bones turn into something beautiful. Do you know, you know I love you so. You know I love you so. I swam across. I jumped across for you. Oh, what a thing to do. Cause you were all yellow. I drew a line. I drew a line for you. Oh, what a thing to do. It was all yellow. <coughs> your skin, oh yeah, your skin and bone. 